Writer-director Rob Zombie turns his love for the 1960s sitcom The Munsters to an origin love story and a feature film. Let's talk about Netflix's The Munsters. Hey guys, Dan here. This is Dan Reviews. Welcome to my spoiler-free review for the new film, the Monsters. This is uh, coming to a Netflix screen near you. Uh, and before we get into the specifics of this movie, I do want to welcome you into Dan Reviews. And thank you for finding this video. We've got plenty more where that came from. Tons of movie and TV reviews on the channel here. And I'd love it if you would uh, think about subscribing down below there. Always appreciate that. And comments and likes, all of that does help my channel out. And I do appreciate it. So let's get into this movie. Um, so unlike other Rob Zombie feature films, let's start with the fact that this is PG. Um, you know, when you hear directed by Rob Zombie, you think, at least I usually do, and I think most would because he's only ever done this. Um, but I think about, you know, these these hardcore, R-rated horror, slasher, um, you know, lots of gore movies. But, you know, he did get his start as, uh, you know, working in the art department of the uh, Pee Wee's Playhouse TV show. So he does have a foot in children's programming. So he's turned his lifetime love of this show, The Munsters, uh, of which, you know, his song Dragula, you know, that was sort of about their their car um, that the Munsters had. And I, I believe he bought that car at some point, the original car that they used in The Munsters. So this guy, you know, has always been infatuated with this series. And uh, as somebody in my 40s, you know, I didn't grow up with it in original runs, of course, but the reruns ran constantly when I was a kid, uh, be it in the afternoon or it would be on Nick at Night sometimes. Um, so yeah, I, I have love for this show, no doubt about it. Um, but uh, what Rob Zombie did here was make it more of an origin story. There are no children. It is the origin of how Lily met Herman and the actual creation of Herman Munster, because obviously he's like a Frankenstein type of monster. And uh, as a result, um, you know, Universal Pictures, you know, is the one that did this movie. And so they are able to use a lot of the symbolism and a lot of the actual, um, you know, movies from those old days. In fact, in one scene, Grandpa Munster is watching Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein. Um, so it makes sense. But the first uh, thing with this movie that I thought was, if it's a Universal movie, why isn't it going to Peacock? Why is it going to be on Netflix? And I think originally it was meant for theatrical release, but then, um, you know, maybe the suits at Universal saw it and said, wow, this is a huge whiff. Let's uh, dump this onto a streamer. But they wouldn't even dump it onto their own streamer. They sent it to Netflix. So right away, bells went off in my head saying like, okay, is this movie like really bad or something? And then I saw a trailer for it and it's one of the worst trailers I've ever seen for a movie. I mean, it is shot poorly. Um, it, 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 if these are the best jokes of the movie, heaven help us all. Um, but look, I am a fan of the show and I was certainly intrigued about what this movie was going to be. So I did give it a watch. Um, and yeah, I, I can see why it's just been sort of shuffled around and dumped. Um, I have so many issues with this movie. Um, but, but let's go back for a second to the basic plot. So Grandpa Monster, who is played by Daniel Roebuck, who, uh, Lost fans will know as Arntz from the first season. I think that was his name. Um, and, uh, Jorge Garcia, by the way, um, is also in this movie as, uh, Floop, who is basically like the, the Igor type character. Um, you know, they, they make him up really good, you know, sort of unrecognizable, but you can tell by the voice it's, it's still Jorge Garcia. Um, and then, uh, basically... This grandpa monster, well, he's not grandpa, I guess, at, at this point in time. There's no kids, but um, the Count, they call him, um, is looking for a husband for his daughter, Lily, who was played by Sherry Moon Zombie, Rob Zombie's wife, the always untalented Sherry Moon Zombie. Um, and then Herman Monster is played by Jeff Daniel Phillips, who I am kind of unfamiliar with, but... He's worked with Rob Zombie a lot in the past, and in fact, uh, Rob had sort of said in an interview that the reason he had put Daniel Roebuck, Sherry Moon, and uh, this guy, um, Jeff, Jeff uh, Daniel Phillips, into this movie is because with a comedy, you worry sometimes about the chemistry or whatever, and he's, oh, these guys have worked together so much, they, you know, they, they have great chemistry. Possibly, but are any of them funny? 
That's a question. Uh, now, Daniel Roebuck, I think, works okay as the count. Um, he's he's probably the, the best of the three. But um, anyway, she discovers uh, this, this new creature, Herman, and she falls in love with him. She does not have any attachment to this guy that uh, her father wants her to be involved with. And it's sort of a, a comedy of errors from there, um, you know, to, to try and make this happen. Um, so that's basically the plot. But I will say one positive, and it's probably the only one. One positive I have is that because Rob Zombie knows this sort of style, like the macabre, the, you know, weird costumes and, and um, great prosthetic makeup, that is the one shining moment of this movie. It looks in terms of the makeup and stuff, it looks cool. The characters look cool, I should say. The movie itself looks cheap. It looks incredibly cheap. It looks like a TV movie and not even like a CBS, you know, evening movie. It looks like a, um, you know, an MTV movie of the week, um, uh, you know, from back in the 90s when MTV had no budget. That, that's what this movie looks like. Uh, makeup, cool. Characters, you know, look, look pretty good, but um, it doesn't work for me, uh, you know, f f on, the, on the grander scale, the bigger scope of uh, the look of the movie. Then you've got the characters. I said Daniel Roebuck, you know, he does okay as the Count. I'll, I'll give it to him. And Jorge Garcia is fine as, as Floop, whatever. Um, but the main characters of this movie, just like in the show, are Herman and Lily Munster. And both of these people are just not good. In, I'm not going to say they're like abysmal in the role, except for well, Sherry Moon Zombie actually kind of is. So if you're familiar with the monsters, you know the theme song where, you know, they're, they're sort of uh, coming out of the door in the morning and whatever, do, do, doing their sort of twisted take on the 50s, uh, you know, sitcom opening, so, you know, sending the kids off to school. Uh, Yvonne DiCarlo, brilliant actress, by the way. She's got two stars on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, one for uh, the TV show and one for her stage work from back in the day. Um, she makes these sort of, um, faces as she walks out the door in the morning. Um, you know, I, I don't know if she sees a spider or whatever the, the, the gag is, but she makes these like sort of quizzical faces and like does this with her hands kind of thing. Sherry Moon Zombie took that like three second moment from the intro of the show and made it her entire character. Every reaction shot she has is that. Every hand movement she has is that. It's like, you didn't watch any episodes. You just watched the, the intro and said, oh, that must be the character. So horrible job. I don't think she's ever good in movies. I, I will say that. So when I heard that he cast her as Lily, I wasn't shocked, but I thought, well, that's a quick way to sort of torpedo the comedy of this. Number two, uh, the guy playing Herman, this Jeff Daniel uh, Phillips, he uh, just doesn't have the mannerisms. He doesn't have the voice. Um, you know, Fred Gwynn had a very deep voice, and we uh, saw it again famously as the judge in My Cousin Vinny. Um, he, you know, he's got this really, really deep baritone voice. This guy doesn't have it, and he also doesn't really have the inflections. He tries to get the laugh right. You know, uh, Herman's got a big belly laugh. That doesn't really work either, but he, he at least attempts that. Um, but I would say maybe the biggest problem of it all is the script and the comedy. Rob Zombie, look, he's a cool dude. Um, you know, he's obviously got a love for this kind of stuff, and this is clearly a passion project of his. So I, I know that he put all he has into this movie, but the fact that he wrote it, I think he should have let someone else take the reins on that. Direct it, sure. But, uh, he's not that funny of a dude. These jokes are either so ham-fisted, um, or they're just punchlines that go nowhere. Like, there's, I didn't laugh once in this whole movie. I really didn't. And, and that is a shame because I loved the TV show. Um, and, and I think it would have been easy um, to at least throw in a couple of, you know, sort of, you know, famous gags or something a little more than just Herman's laugh or whatever. Um, and uh, look, it, it got some sort of approval from the remaining cast members because uh, Butch Patrick is in this movie in uh, a bit role, as is... Um, Oh, I forget which Marilyn it is that's still left because they had two Marilyns throughout the years. Um, but whatever, she, she's in it as a, a bit part two. Um, now, you know, obviously they didn't see the movie before they uh, agreed to be in it. Maybe they were regretting that decision. But um, it, it for a kid's movie, like I think, you know, something that, that was for kids back in the day that now, you know, might seem a little, you could amp it up a little bit. 
um, but they still made it for kids, is when they redid the Three Stooges movie. Now, that was the Farrelly Brothers. They certainly know comedy. And they know sort of all ages comedy, too. You know, Dumb and Dumber is a great example of that. They've done some R-rated stuff, too, of course. But they can do kids stuff. And Three Stooges was such a funny movie. Laugh out loud moments. Everybody did great, uh, you know, sort of miming uh, and, and, and impersonating their original characters. Um, that you get none of that here. It's like it's all been stripped away uh, in this movie. Um, look, I, I can't... Uh, recommend it at all. It, it's it's an F. This is just an abomination to the original show. And it's sad because I know that that wasn't Rob Zombie's intention. You know, he loves this show. I'm sure this was made with love, but uh, I didn't love it for sure. Hate, I think, would be the word. Easily one of the worst of the year. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time on Damn Reviews. Bye.